This might be the most ambitious and sophisticated lens ever put out by one of these budget lens manufacturers. And I think if you take the time to learn to use it right, the results can be absolutely stunning. And in full disclosure, this lens was sent out to me at no cost to myself for the purpose of making this video, but all opinions are my own and this is not a paid or sponsored video. This is a 100 millimeter f2.8 two times magnification macro lens with tilt and shift function. Now all of these different features have been found in lenses before, but this is the first time that you can get all of those features in one single lens. And one of the beauties of having a lens like this is with this feature set, you're probably not going to grow out of it. So by the time you're ready for two times magnification macro, or by the time you're ready for a tilt function or a shift function, it's all built into this lens. Before we jump into the image quality, I wanna talk about the build quality on this lens because this is one place that I think people generally worry about with budget lens manufacturers. Well, I can tell you that this lens is built better than most of the Canon or Sony or Nikon lenses out there. This is an all metal lens. It's even got a metal lens hood. It's got a metal lens mount. Everything about this lens feels completely premium. So you're not gonna get this lens and feel like you're buying a budget lens by any means. Importantly, you should know that this is an all manual lens. That means it is a manual focus, manual aperture lens. If you are shooting macro photography, particularly at two times magnification, you're always going to be using manual focus anyways. So I don't really see that as an issue, but just making you aware of it. It has a really nice, smooth, well dampened focus ring, and it has a clicked aperture ring, which is tactile and really nice to use. First thing I wanna do is talk about this lens as a 100 millimeter f2.8, two times magnification macro lens. Let's just ignore that tilt shift function right now, because I think for some people they'll see that as intimidating, but as I break this down and just talk about how this works, you'll see that if you start thinking this as just a standard 100 millimeter f2.8 macro lens, then that tilt shift functionality comes in to just make your experience and the use of the lens even a little bit better. To start with, two times magnification just means that whatever size the object is in real life, once it's projected on the sensor, it is twice the size. This is gonna give us access to a world, this microscopic world, and things that we've never seen before. It's when you see any of these fancy macro photos where you can see every hair on a fly, you can see its mouth, or you can see the texture of an insect's eye, almost exclusively those lenses are shot or those shots are taken with lenses that are two times magnification or bigger. And once upon a time, a two times magnification lens was quite rare or very expensive, and now they've become more and more affordable. And as a two times magnification lens, it is extremely sharp. And across most of the frame, you certainly have the most sharpness and detail in the center of frame, even starting from an aperture of f2.8. But it's important to understand that when we are shooting macro photos, particularly when we are shooting at two times magnification, the closer we get to that object, the more shallow the depth of field is. That is the area that is in focus. And at times it can get absolutely razor thin. And if you're shooting at f2.8, it's almost unusable. So with a macro lens like this or any macro lens that has two times magnification, you're almost always gonna be shooting at f9 or f11 or somewhere around there. And I found that this lens performs best at around f9. And most of the shots you're gonna see throughout this video were shot somewhere between f9 and f11. And when you use it at f9 or f11, you're getting incredible sharpness, you're getting incredible detail, and you're getting it right across the frame, all the way into the corners. And I think it's also important to point out that this is a full frame lens. And when this lens first came out and I saw the specifications, I thought almost certainly this is gonna be an APS-C only lens. But it is a full frame lens. It's available on all the popular mounts, even the mounts that are only APS-C. So I think the beauty of this lens is it does perform equally well on an APS-C sensor or a full frame sensor. And even if you are shooting with a crop sensor camera right now, you can buy this lens, it will work very well, but you've got a full frame lens that will work if you do upgrade to full frame down the track. So when I first started using the lens, I was just strictly going out and shooting it straight on. I wasn't using the tilt shift function. I was just shooting normal macro photos and I was getting fantastic results. And then I wanted to kind of sort of ease myself into the tilt shift function of the lens. 
And I think the way we need to think about this tilt shift function is the tilt is used in one very specific separate way than the shift function. The tilt function just allows you to change the angle of the lens and which direction it's pointing. Now, this is important because if you are shooting macro photography, we've already talked about how we have a very shallow depth of field. By tilting the lens, we're actually changing the plane of focus and depending on the angle that we are shooting the object, we are getting a deeper depth of field by tilting the lens. And I think probably one of the most popular things to do with this lens is going to be insect photography. And almost always when I'm out shooting insects, I am coming up on an insect and to have the deepest depth of field, to have the most in focus, you wanna be shooting so your lens is like this and the object you're shooting is like this. So if it's a leaf that an insect's on, you want them to be flat and even. But often to do that means coming up over top of the insect you'll cast shade on the insect or you'll be over top of them and scare them and they'll fly away. So what the tilt function allows us to do is get in a position where we don't have to be sort of straight over top of the insect. We allow the tilt of the lens to take care of that. So that means we're able to be down a little bit more. We're not quite over top of it. We're less likely to scare the insect off and we get a focus plane that matches up with the leaf or the insect or whatever we're taking a photo of. So this is particularly useful for taking photos of insects. And so what I found is because most of the time I'm just going out, sneaking up on an insect and trying to take a shot, I just left the lens tilted like this the whole time because I was consistently shooting down on the insect like this and it saved me from getting up over top of it. So I think that's a good feature and I think it's a way to think about using the tilt function on this lens without being intimidated. So. Once I started using the tilt function, I just tilted it into the maximum position, and then I just walked around, I did all my shots like this with the tilt function. Now, I think because this is a tilt shift lens, a lot of people are gonna be thinking, well, you kinda use the tilt and the shift at the same time, and that isn't necessarily the case. You don't have to use the tilt and the shift at the same time, and in fact, in a lot of situations, you wouldn't want to do that. So I'm just gonna talk about now separately what the shift function does on this lens. Bear in mind with other lenses, the shift function is designed to do slightly different things. But on this lens, I see the shift function designed to be able to use that two times magnification. We get in very, very close to an object or, or whatever we're shooting. We will take a shot of the object and then we can shift the lens back and forth. And essentially what we're doing is we're creating a panorama macro shot. Now, this might sound strange and maybe not as use useful as you might think, but what you've got to bear in mind is when you're shooting at two times magnification, you're getting very, very close to whatever the object is. And when you are that close, you don't fit a whole lot of it in the frame. So in order to actually get an object that's an even bigger than, I mean, at two times magnification, I couldn't even fit a, an entire AirPod in the shot. That's how tight it is. So to get something where you've got an incredible level of detail, but give you a little bit wider field of view, you can set yourself up on a tripod, you can focus in on something, and then you can actually slide back and forth and get the multiple shots and then pan them together or stitch them together as a panorama. You can also use the tilt and shift function at the same time, and in the situation where you're coming at a bit of an angle and you wanna get a deeper depth of field, all you have to do is tilt the lens get that uh, perspective, get that deeper depth of field with the tilted lens, and then after you do that, go and use your shift function to create your sort of macro panorama shot. The other thing that's great about having a 100 millimeter two times magnification lens is you don't have to be as close to your subject as you would with something like a 60 millimeter or a 20 millimeter or an 80 millimeter. This allows you to at least get a little separation from the thing you're taking a photo of. So your minimum focus distance to get two times magnification is about 10 inches or 25 centimeters. 
Now, keeping in mind that's 10 inches or 25 centimeters from the sensor of the camera, not the lens. So once you get down to the lens, the end of the lens, you're probably only three or four inches in that range left. So you, you're still reasonably close, but if you were shooting with a very wide lens at a two times magnification, you're really gonna be right up on top of that insect or whatever you're taking a photo of. And particularly if it is an insect, it might be a problem with scaring them off if they are a little bit skittish. So I think this does give you a little bit better working distance being a 100 millimeter lens. And really, this is a fantastic lens that I can highly recommend, and there's really only two criticisms that I have of the lens. One is the tilt-shift function. It's got a little lock that locks it in place so that it doesn't move around when you don't want it to move around. But then once you unlock it, there's really no dampening. It just kind of moves back and forth, and it's, it's a little bit of a clunky setup. It would be nice if that was dampened. It's not a deal breaker by any means, and in use, it's fine. And on the shift function, you actually have a, a few clicks to kind of help you sort of find your spot. But it would be nice if that was dampened instead of kind of just free flowing. So you don't have any ability to really dampen that. You only have a lock switch, so it's on or off. Once again, that's not a deal breaker, but it's one of the things that would be nice to see improved. And the only other criticism I would have is that the photos straight out of camera prior to editing are a little bit lower contrast than you would get out of a modern Canon, Sony, or Nikon lens. This is fine, you can tweak this in editing, just use the contrast slider or add a little bit of S-curve just to add a little of that contrast back. But straight out of the camera, they don't look exactly like you're gonna get out of first party lens manufacturer. And in the scheme of things, you almost wouldn't expect them to. At a lens, it's probably, if one of the first party lens manufacturers did make a lens like this, it would probably be four times the price. That's the reality. The TT Artisan 100 millimeter macro lens is available on all the popular mirrorless mounts. And for pricing and availability, I will put links in the description down below. Now, if you're interested in macro photo, macro video, and this lens is still a little bit out of your price range, I've just shown a video on screen now. This is a small, super sharp APS-C macro lens. It has a magnification of one time, not two times, but it is a very budget-friendly entry into this sort of photography.